doing today what's going on how's everything been going this week so far there she is all right now let's see how i can add christy to here christy i think you need to send a invite hold on nope found it boom dr glam hey how y'all doing what you mean yeah, do something to this head, but you know, we in here. I think I sent the invite. I'm not sure. Hey, 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 hey. I'm so deep in the camera right now. Let me uh, I need to like take 10 steps back in from the camera. Lord. Okay. I'll, this is the best I could do because I'm in this chair, right? Now. It's okay. It's okay. Goodness, my hair looks big. Okay. I, I literally I, just took, we already talked about it, but I just took my faux locks out and I was like, I'm going to go live. <laughs> I'm going to put a hat on. <laughs> I was like, well, I haven't done anything to my hair, but I guess I'll do my face, throw it off a little bit, you know, whatever. You know, it's the first time being back, so I got to, you know, just stop, put a little bit of effort into this. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. So what's been going on? How have you been? Greatness. Um, you know, I knew that we were going to go live, so I have kind of not told much people this, but um, so we won a contract yesterday. What the hell? Right? <laughs> Just right into it. Let's go. <laughs> right into it. Right into it. Nothing Let's but to go. do it. We won a contract yesterday. Um, we have, we closed out a sub contract with like one of the primes on the HCAT schedule, which everybody knows I like to focus on HCAT oh. because, Hey, if it's what I do, then I need to play with the heavy hitters that's already in the game. Um, and so we closed out our, uh, sub contract with H with one of the HCATs prime. We got awarded a contract yesterday. We're opening up another one, possibly subcontracting opportunity for another prime on the HCATs. So like things are moving fairly quickly, um, but it's summer. So everybody knows it's Q4. It's here. All the <laughs> it's here. So I love it. I love to see all the money pour out. That's just me. Exactly. I wish yeah. you on that. You know, we're closing out. It's time for some money to start rolling in. I, I guess um, a lot of people are already in the, in, the, in the comments saying straight to the winds. Congratulations. So that's a Thank huge you. accomplishment to, like, immediately kick it off with. And I love the fact that you speak more to that, that subcontractor prime relationship. Yeah. Um, because that's a lot of people don't, like, think about that as an aspect of really leveraging that because – the connections you can make in this corporate space, you can take that and do business on their on the pub I mean on the private side of the aisle. So yeah. I love I love the fact that you take that approach. We um just partnered with a, a company as well mm -hmm. called Procure Now. So what that when what that does is it allows the contracting opportunity to go flow into our platform as well. Oh that's so, awesome. Yes, girl. So it's just now like because I've been so focused on that technology side of things, now seeing the like seeing the way things have come to life, like from it being just an idea in my brain to now like really seeing it. So that's amazing. So that's that's super exciting. I put in the topics that we were also going to share and talk about. Um, but before we do that, can you just tell us how you went through the process of finding this prime and working with them to bid on this opportunity? Yeah, so um, finding a prime is probably one of the most, like, easiest things. And I say that now because starting out, I did something that was so foolish. Um, but I learned a lot from the experience. So, so I, I actually was looking for the list 
around here in my office. I had a list of primes that matched the NAICS code that I did. All the primes. Mm -hmm. And I called them individually and was like, do you have any opportunities for me to work on like a contract with you? And they were like, no, like, why are you even call like get to the point of the conversation so i quickly learned like you really need to know your stuff before you approach a prime because they don't have the time like this isn't a babysitting gig right like you have to know so i quickly pivot so it was a list of like probably like three close to 200 names and i quickly pivot at number 50. i was like okay something's off about this right um and by the time i hit number 77 i stopped i still haven't touched the list because it's taken off right um and so what i did was i looked through what's called the gsa e library which is essentially i call it like the government supermarket <laughs> when the government needs something they're like up oh, let's go to walmart gsa e library is their walmart right and so I found the HCAT schedule, well, the HCATs, you know, HCATs. And so when I found HCATs, I was like, all these companies, and I really understood what GSA meant. Um, I was like, dad, all these companies on this list. So I picked up the phone, started, um, hey, calling, calling. But then I still didn't get it right. Um, then I started to use FPDS, which is really, which is really where sat right with fpds because oh. fpds tells you like where the government is spending right so we always sing it where the money reside where the money reside i actually went to go look for where the money resides and so i went and saw okay well you know in my NAICS code or my psc code they are awarding they just awarded such and such company x amount of millions of dollars I looked up the contract, I found as much as I could on the RFP, and I was like, oh, well then now let me take bits of it and approach, you know, this particular prime and see how I can support. That's how it got started. From that point on, it's more like, you know, hey, there's an opportunity here, would you like to go after it? So I really learned like, you really got to niche down and then you really have to learn exactly what your company brings to the table because a lot of people are coming with their hands open but with the government you got to come with your hands full <laughs> in order for them to take it first then right. give you the money because <laughs> you want to leave empty empty hand <laughs> right right so they surely will take it i give if you don't if you don't play your cards right so we um you know, I was really focused on really identifying like the prime that I'm working with, they were awarded a contract April 27th. So I started to really niche down on even the year of when awards are going out because that's important yeah. as to, they might be full swing into the contract. They already have who they're gonna use. They've already submitted it to the contracting officer. They don't need anything, mm -hmm. but I found this prime that was awarded April 27th of this year. So it's only a couple weeks. They probably now, have their... how much was the contract? Let people know how much was the contract. Because <laughs> I've been saying over that $700,000 threshold, they have to use sub. So let them know how much was that contract. The contract is $455 million. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Did y'all hear that? <laughs> So that that was huge, like within itself, like. And so you saw that it had been awarded just yep. a few months ago. Yep. And you said, you know what? Maybe they have some some subs. Maybe they don't. Yeah. Because they will always need more subs. This is if it's four hundred million dollars, right? Um, that means this is more than just a one year or a a, a month a few month long project. Like right. this is more than likely four to five years with options to renew. So yep. you want to make sure that you are building those relationships with these primes. And somebody asked earlier what a prime was. So uh, when a contract is awarded, there are two types of contractors, right? So there's a prime contractor. This is the person that the contract is awarded to who's responsible for um, reporting back to the government. They're responsible mm -hmm. for all of the reports. They're responsible for managing subcontractors. 
So the subcontractors are companies who who support them in achieving whatever this contract um, outcome is, right? So right. let's say, for example, it's a um, construction company, right? Within construction, we know there's multiple facets. So I have a company that does electrical work, right? And Christine has a company that does uh, drywall. That, those are opportunities for us to work with this larger prime construction company to do some subcontracting work because they are required to work with subcontractors based off of the um, amount for that contract, right? right? So I hope that answers that question for you. Um, if Christine, you want to add something to it, but yeah, so that's huge. That's a huge opportunity. Yeah. Um, and now and I, tell us, tell us more about like how, how you got to this phase. So we talked about how much the contract was. Let's get yeah. to the next piece of it. So, so essentially I'm going to tell everybody my tactics on how I approach, um, <laughs> on these prime websites, more than likely they'll have like the general email, right? Like info at google.com whatever and i you know this might sound selfish now but i personally look for the black person within the company or the chief diversity officer right and i've they always say, find that. somebody you can relate to exactly it's about head. relatability there we go and so the whole thing is about building relationships Nation. and with this era i feel like everything that's going on, this climate has actually boosted the ability to subcontract under the larger primes. Cause they're like, they will ask, are you black owned to your face? And you gotta be like, yes. They're like, sure, sign here. I'm like, okay. yes. like so pretty much, you know, you find the person that you can relate to. And um, I called the company and I, you know, back then I was doing like the pitch to the first person that picked up the phone, like, okay. hey, my name's Christina. <laughs> right. And now instead it's more strategic. So I don't pitch to the person that picks up the phone because I know that that is not my stakeholder. That's not my decision maker. So I actually instead just said, can I speak to such and such, which is the person that I found. And they were like, oh, this person not in office. I said, well, how can I contact them? It's regarding contract number like you know i say the contract number so in their mind that receptionist is thinking oh, this is the government mm -hmm. right like you guys already know who this person like you they already know the business <laughs> right because she knows the contract number off the head but in reality i'm reading the contract number i'm like <laughs> contract number n c five four six and she's already overwhelmed she's like oh, okay well here's his email Mm -hmm. So now I, instead of while everybody else is dealing with the website's general info at google.com, I now have John Doe at google.com's email. Okay. And so then the approach once I have that email is to present the capabilities as it pertains to the contract. We fall off a lot because we just hand our capabilities over and we're like, this Hire. is what I do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what 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 are you gonna do for me? Oh, I have something to drop after this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you gotta really take your capabilities, pick out, okay, this is what I could do within this particular contract, right? Exactly. And then we probably like within twenty four hours I got a call and we had the call, it went really well, and then they were like um, you know, we'll, we'll set up our meeting so we could go over the particulars. I then plan on responding back with a case study, right? Because that's how you seal the relationship. It's like, baby, this is what I can do. Let me show you, right? Because you didn't submit a proposal. You didn't submit a pitch. So you have to kind of cover it up with what you can do. So I'm going to submit a case study to seal like, okay, this is what I my deliverables that I've done in the past. These are the outcomes that we've done, whatever. And then after that, it's just follow up, follow up until you figure out exactly how the relationship's going to go. Got it. See, that's a, a really strategic approach. I know uh, initially getting started, like I was doing a lot of cold calls. Um, just Me too. Really Did information. Girl, calling whoever, whenever. 
Um, but I love what you said about that relatability. Um, that is a key component of building relationships and being able to just build long lasting relationships, not just for this moment. Right. Yeah. Um, and another thing you said was about that capability statement. I had created, um, like a, a real last week about like changing and the verbiage and language and your capability statement. So I'm like, I have to drop it after this live. Like you it's do. It's only going to make sense. <laughs> um, you have to. Yeah, because yes. you know what? Something that a lot of people didn't understand, like, we use terminology in the regular, you know, non-government. It's different from the government. And so I can say human resources, but when we're talking about, like, the Office of Human uh, human Capital Transformation, right, like, an age of, a sub-sub agency in the government, they're not using human resources. They're using the terminology human capital. So for them, I can't, I'm putting human capital on yes. the capability the statement. <laughs> right. So you got to hit them with the words they know. If not, they're just going to be like, ah. Got it. Okay. Um, and so you have a question already uh, based off of what you were saying. So you see it? Are you seeing it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It says, Chrisley, don't judge me. Never do. We are a certified prime with a focus on construction, but we want to go after other fields like cleaning and maintenance services. What's the best approach? We altered our capability statement depending on the contract. Ooh. Okay. This, this, okay, there's twofold to this, right? So one, construction is a beast by itself. Exactly. So if you're going to focus on construction, you need to focus, on, focus construction. on construction. Focus on construction. Get your licenses, get your bonded. Like, there's so many regulations that you need to follow mm -hmm. that it can be overwhelming. If you want to say, hey, I'm going to pause and not do construction right now, and maybe I get my foot in the door with cleaning and maintenance services, then maybe you start there, build the relationship. Maybe you target target if i were you i would target the agencies that need the construction like public building services i would target them to provide cleaning and maintenance services for them mm -hmm. then you have the relationship so when the construction opportunities present itself you just take it from there you want to okay. take the next question yeah um I, I'm, I'm just going to piggyback off of that yeah. for a little bit as well um but also thinking about it from the aspect of these, if what's the capacity of your company right now, right? Do you have the capability to make sure that your team is at this construction site and doing everything that needs to be done, but then also in a location that's cleaning or is this two completely different businesses? So you have to think about it from that standpoint as well. Um, so yeah, you, that probably, even though there could be some overlap by cleaning up construction um, sites, that there could be some overlap in that space if that's the work that you want to do. Um, but keep in mind, like, you have to have the capacity to do this. And like you <coughs> said, all of the requirements you need for construction, honey, I wouldn't want to do nothing else um, unless it was with a different company. And just, just to keep yourself uh, safe and to be a little risk diverse, uh, I mean, a risk adverse um, with you know those licensing and things that you may have so just yeah. keep that aspect of in mind um someone said is there such a thing as too many nate codes um i offer a range of products okay so when when that there is a thing that that is having too many nate codes right but the thing is do all of these products and are all of these products in line with one another right uh, do you wholesale certain type of products uh, right. So I know like sometimes you can do you can have a next code for wholesaling and like there not be a next code for those. Pro and there also be a next code for those products individually. But keep that in mind. Just make sure that these products are in the same area or in the same field. Right. So let's say you say um, I can provide you with uh, some computers and a uh, few mouses. Right. Yeah. If you are also saying I do paper, I mean, I can get you paper. That's office equipment. That's office supplies. If you're also saying I can get you a desk, 
that's office equipment that's office supplies so it's within that same realm of things even though it's completely different conversation so keep that in mind now what you don't want to do is say i can get you computers i can also get you you know a leaf blower like a wig we're doing too look a wig <laughs> like, after, like we're doing like too we, much yeah, right like we we want to you christine chrisley said it earlier you want to focus on something that's the biggest thing. And it's so much easier when you focus because now you're not targeting everybody. You right. want to know the people that you need to go to. So mm -hmm. find, find an area and stick to that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll leave that. I don't know if we have any more. Oh, wait, there is a question. I'm going to pull it up. Read it out loud real quick. Okay, it says, how do you leverage set asides? We have a, wait, we have a facility um, that are certified service disabled veteran owned and it should have popped up can you see it mm, no not yet no okay it says what does it say it says how do you leverage set asides we have a facility and we are service disabled veteran owned business uh, I don't know. okay so leveraging a certification is literally doing the same work that you will be doing if you didn't have a certification you have to still reach out to these people you have to target them but this gives you more of a benefit because you can target them going into you know going to them with something that they already need right especially for a service disabled veteran owned business the uh, set aside requirements for those you'll see a number of different opportunities going out and especially if you see a rp that you would like to bid on but it feels like too massive or something in that case figure out I mean, um so in sam.gov what they well yeah i hate this new system but in me, Sam me too <laughs> they have it to where you can see the people who have subscribed to this opportunity you can mm -hmm. see the list of people who are already planning to bid on it, but also you can find a prime that you would like to possibly work with and let them know about that opportunity and say, hey, we would love to partner with you on this. We believe that this project will be X, Y, and Z amount, right? That's the way that you do it. it it'll end up being the same way. It's still about building relationships. Um, so that's the way that you usually leverage those different set-aside opportunities. And then I'll also let you take that as well, Christine. Yeah, um, I always say to people, certifications is the cherry on top. It is not the pie, right? Like, oh. there's so many people that have won contracts without certifications. Mm -hmm. So your responsibility is never to start a conversation saying, I'm service disabled veteran. <laughs> that is not the Instead, you one, it's like, you know, how she was saying is going after the opportunities in Sam.gov and filtering out set-asides for service-disabled veterans, right? And when you find those opportunities, obviously, you don't have to advertise that you're service-disabled because the contracting officer knows only service-disabled veterans qualify for yeah. this, right? But in, in terms of doing business where you're trying to network, it really is the same as not having the certification. Either way, you have to network. Either way, you have to make the contact. So, yeah, like there's there's just, that's the answer. Yeah, let us know if you have some more questions, Rob. Uh, but that is exactly what we're talking about. Oh, Chris, I'm so glad somebody asked this question. So they said, I need to learn more. Who's teaching government contracts? So um, we just added this component to the website to where it will be a training. Uh, and you remember before when I had Grow With Gov and I'm yes. like, do you want to be an instructor? Listen, I am back. Do you want to be an instructor? I want to okay. be an instructor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited. Girl, it took a little bit to get it, like get the technology aspect of it to the point where I was like happy with it. But yeah. now it'll it'll not and like it'll be the training videos and things like that. But it'll also be us having conversations with people, so they'll be able to um, send messages and ask questions if they're having an issue yeah. and things like that. So making it more of a subscription model, which I'm super excited about, so we can get paid. I love it. I love. I'm, I'm down for that. Listen, okay. I'm down for that because <laughs> we about a coin. Okay. <laughs> I know somebody said in the comments, somebody said, what are the small jobs called again that don't require bidding? Yes. Uh, micro purchases don't require bidding and some simplified acquisitions 
that's the answer. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but that was the topic of the conversation today. Um, oh, yes, it was. Started, <laughs> it was. We got started on those sub and prime contracts and opportunities. We're going to have to do this every week or something. Yes, um, I'm down. But, um, yeah, so let's get into that aspect of it, the micro-purchases and simplified acquisitions. So for those micro-purchases, tell us about your process. Oh, well, I'll just explain a little bit of what a micro-purchase is. So micro-purchases are purchases that can be made with a government uh, purchase card. So it's called a GCP, but it's really, it's just a government credit card, right? And they have a certain limit and it depends on that agency. So mm -hmm. federal governments have uh, purchase cards, state, local governments, anchor institutions, universities, police departments, um, uh, what is it, airports, they all have purchase cards that you will be able to utilize, and, well, that they're able to utilize to purchase products and services from you. So what the difference is, is the purchasing threshold. So at federal levels, they have purchasing thresholds that start at $10,000, um, down to three, well, 5,000, 5, 3,000. Yep. And then some agency, I mean, some state and local agencies have um, anywhere between 2,500 to $12,000, right? I mean, $1,200. Mm -hmm. um, so it really just depends, but anything in those range. And if you're thinking about it, like, that's a lot of money just to do like one off job. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about your process and um, going after these micro contracts and the simplified acquisition, which is, well, I'll let you explain the simplified acquisition. Yeah. <laughs> so simplified acquisition is essentially similar um, with micro purchases. And so with micro purchases, it's that credit card, you know, under $10,000. With simplified acquisition, right now it goes up to 250000 And so essentially it could be, it, it probably wouldn't be a swipe, but it would be like probably multiple invoices. And you're not, there's no bid, right? The way that you go after those opportunities, I personally have already fostered. So I, I pay attention to the calendar, the government calendar, right? So I work backwards. Q4 is from July to September. And I know that, hey, in July to September, a lot of low-hanging fruit is going to be there. So I need to build relationships between December. Well, actually not December because ain't nobody nobody's in the office in December. <laughs> exactly nobody's there but january the end of january up until june right so from january to june which is six months you're doing six months of responding to rfis mm -hmm. six months of follow-up six months of providing case studies research docs white papers six months of attending these events on this online platform that they don't never answer questions for <laughs> six months of looking at because they go, oh, I hate them. Um, computer, I mean, phone, phone. But six months of also looking at their procurement forecasts. Okay. So a lot of people spend time thinking about bidding, but everybody knows me. I hate bidding, even though I did went, it's just, I don't like it. Yeah. But, if you actually pay attention to like procurement forecasts, there that is the agency telling you this is what like you forecast the weather. This is what we think we're gonna need later on, and this is when it might come out. And so I look at agencies' forecasts and I tell them in an email to the Office of Small Business Utilization, which is OSDBU, Small Business Diversity, whatever utilization, whatever. I contact them and I put on a meeting because I want to speak to the program manager. I don't really want to speak to the office of small business because they don't know what the work is. So I go and you had the real with the yearbook, the that little <laughs> yearbook that you did. I was like, ooh, that one right there, right? So you get the program manager, you identify who that person is, you speak directly to them. And you're building that relationship because for them, they decide what they need and they communicate it to the contracting officer. Like, can you put out this particular opportunity? This is what I need. So you really want to start building the relationship. It's six, like the wins that I feel now come after heavy losses between January to June. 
but you have to keep making contact and keep touching them. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, um, I like the, the fact that you said like those departments, because a lot of times, like the reason I put that out is because a lot of times people always say, I got to talk to purchasing. I got to talk to procurement. Like don't talk to them people. They can't no, help nothing. They got the money, but they, they're not making the real decisions around here. Talk to the department that you need help with. Talk to the people who are going to use what you need, right? Um, so that's a really, really good point, especially for these micro-purchasing opportunities. Um, and something that you don't have to bid on, child, sign me up. Like, Please. <laughs> sign me up uh, all day, every day. So those are some of the opportunities definitely to take a look at. Um, but like Chrissy said, Christy said, it's all about building relationships. Everything yep. is going to be tailored back to this concept of building relationships. Now, if you already have relationships, I know we're talking about federal contracts right now, but I just want to tap a little bit into the state and local. Now, if you already have relationships, let's say at the city you live in or the county you, you know, live in, use those relationships. Yeah. That's the, use them. Those same people who coming around knocking on your door during election time, call that mayor, call that commissioner. That's Hello, it right uh, there. This is you said this. You said one thing. This is what I'm looking for. Call yeah. these people. These are these are your constituents. These are the yeah. people you need to be able to lean on um, during the I mean during these times when you need help to get into this this space, right? So look at it from that aspect of it. Uh, someone said, "Can you speak about prime contracts?" you have one with the government contracts um yeah so prime contracts it really just depends on where you are but for prime contracts that we've been able to win it have really been in the technology space because that's what i focus on now uh, so it's been custom technology and really just just responding to the rfps with the scope of work and making sure that you let them know that i understand what this job is requiring of me a lot of times people just respond and say, hey, I can do this, this, and that. But sometimes components are missing out, like key components. And it can be something so small as, like, we want you to be able to create APIs that can automatically generate. Like, for us, it's really small details, but for them, that could be a key. So you want to start by responding and letting them know, like, hey, I understand these opportunities. So for us, that's where the space that we've been previously before starting GovLA um, I was, I had a pharmaceutical and medical supply company. Uh, and honestly, I just started doing that because I could get certified and I could make a little money. And I had, <laughs> I had some connections um, in that space from the job that I used to work at previously. So I won prime contracts for products. So I've always been like a huge advocate for businesses um, that provide products. So this mm -hmm. is like the first time I've been on like the service side of things. So that those are the two areas that we focus on. Well, I don't focus on uh, medical supplies and equipment anymore, but previously. So those are some of the prime contracts that I've been able to hold in these spaces. And of course, they range from, well, starting at some micro purchases for like $3,000 just to fix like a website, um, all the way up to $250,000 for just some typical products. So those have been the prime contracts that we've been on. Yeah, I would say, like, mine is just human resources, like project management within human resources, okay. like integrating the biggest thing that I'm going to start pushing, just because I see the shift going on, um, is integrating HRIS systems, like there's a contract every week for HRIS systems. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna call you girl. Okay. Because okay. These biz is like, and I every time I see it, I wait for that word, which somebody asked that question just a second ago. Uh -huh. Somebody said, if I change the name of my company and put consulting on it, um, mm -hmm. is that a bad thing? If, if if my business has the word consulting in them, will that limit me? N no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> My my business is called Chrisley G Consulting. Like, and it's just okay. you gonna read the whole thing from A to Z, okay? It doesn't limit you at all. Um, <laughs> honestly, your business could be called Red Ball Blue Line. Like, if you really want it, it's okay. just about your capabilities and the relationship you build. So, I've been really focusing on like more so training and development. Um, and building like strategic HR like 
programs. Mm -hmm. But now I'm starting to see a lot of HRIS contracts come out and I'm like, mm, I might float in that direction because I just did it for a prime. So I was like, okay, let's see what that happens. Somebody says something else. We be sleeping on county estate contracts. Yeah. Every okay. day. Every day you sleep. Let on. me tell you, this right here, this is how you know it's real. This is like bids, right? That I put out, RFIs I respond to, right? If you see the X, that's like I lost. Oh, okay. But then I forgot. And so that's, that goes to sleeping on it because I completely forgot that I put out a state bid and won. And when I won and I saw the letter, I thought to myself, like, what is it? <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> until I saw, you know, the usual bird is our intent to award. I was like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, what, yeah. What, what, that? that was me. <laughs> that was, I did that. Yeah, yeah. But literally, you are bidding like so much. And I really like to encourage, I guess that's why I focus more on subbing on the federal. And then with the state and cities, yes, there is a lot of people sleep on that. Like, there's some companies that make millions off of doing business with the state, city, county. I tell you, in New York City, there's, you know, there's a particular company with a government official that has relationships that make millions um, off of state, you know, New York City alone. So you definitely don't want to sleep on that. Not at all. That definitely especially if you live in a metropolitan area like girl stop playing on sleeping on these dollars no. um and especially also upcoming areas there's a lot of cities that are upcoming and i wish i had the link in front of me but a lot of cities just received a bunch of money from the federal government for um covid response covid relief so I cannot remember the name of it right now, but I will yeah. definitely, I'll create something talking about it. I'm talking trillions, trillions, of, trillions of dollars of dollars. Don't yeah. let these cities tell y'all they broke. They ain't broke. They ain't broke. Not you a lick. bad about that. You paying your tax money. You want some of that back. Okay. Absolutely. And, it, and you know, what's funny. Um, what I will tell people, if you, we always talk about build a relationship, build a relationship, build a relationship. If you don't have a relationship with anyone, let's say your network is real small, you mm -hmm. don't know nobody, the biggest thing I can get, tell you is get involved in elections. So here in New York City, the comptroller, which is the person that controls the contracts for the city, they're going up for elections. And I joined this group called like the Black Government Contracting Club, and they had us interview all the candidates and so now you put yourself in this place where whoever wins they know your face they know your business so you really want to start like the mayor mayoral elections is coming up i'm about to be like hey such and such what's your plan and right now especially because of this climate it's time to put pressure on these candidates yes. to say what is your plan not for diversity or minority women business enterprise because we already oh. know that's skewed okay yeah. what is your plan for black owned businesses that's it i don't want to know about mwbe or wbe or mwe i want to know about black and so we really <laughs> have to make that clear so we can get the relationship building yes and don't be afraid to say that because at the end of the day when we're in these spaces, people are asking for what they want, right? Yep. We have to stop being afraid or, you know, like basically always trying to be like, oh, you know, I don't want to exclude people. Every time someone else is in this conversation and they're talking about why these opportunities aren't available for their community, that's an opportunity for us to talk about our community as well, right? Yep. And yep. also thinking about it in the aspect of it's not a, it's not and exclusion, right? Because everything that is designed to help minorities and black owned businesses, right? I mean, black owned businesses is gonna help minorities overall. Yep. Uh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, right? Yep. So keep that in mind. Always ask these people, especially during the political um, time frame, and don't, after they get in office, you don't let them slide, okay? I'm here to tell you, do not let that slide. Always ask questions. If they just had a capable uh, disparity study come out, 
ask for the results on the disparity study. Also participate in giving responses, you know, especially if it's been hard for you to do business with these agencies. Participate in these disparity studies, giving feedback. And um, yeah, th that's it. State and local, I'm telling you, you don't have to send a bunch of emails to reach out to the, you can get in your car. About five hours in gas. Go to yep. go to city hall. Go city hall. That's what I was <laughs> going hey. to the city hall. Like, hey, how you doing? My name is. Hi, I I saw RFP this morning. This is why I probably love state and local. <laughs> and this is why that is my Kiwi's heel. I like to stay in a place of comfort, which is bad. So, but it's hard when I get an RFP and it's three pages. I'm like, <laughs> you can have this next week. Right. You, like, <laughs> you want doing it? <laughs> like, what time you want me to start? Right. Like, whereas at the federal space, you're looking at 70 pages and you're like, right? It's, it's really, sometimes it gets discouraging. Yes. And they are also, a lot of them are really in a space to um, help in a, like, they have the heart to help too. Yeah. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I know a lot of us probably got aunties, uncles, cousins, somebody that work for um, the city. You want to tap into it and, you know, work on those relationships as well. Uh, someone added participate in city council meetings. Yes, you do. Because that is how you figure out which big, which projects will be coming out. Anytime yep. they talk about some construction that needs to be done, it has to be approved through city council first. Yep. Do that. You'll find, you'll, you'll reach the, the big wigs at the comp at the companies that you could possibly partner with by yep. attending, you know, some of these city council meetings. And you don't have to attend every single one of them. They have the agenda that comes out prior to the meeting. Look at it. If it makes sense to you, show up. Yep. If you don't, sometimes, you know, just getting your name on, on, on the record. Hi, my name is Shakia Kegler with GovEA. This is what we do. This is what we can do for you. But and I think, like, especially in New York City, it, um, obviously it's a large metro area, but, like, I always look at New York City Council's um, schedule, and they break it up by agencies. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a committee for education. There's a committee for economic development. There's a, Like, if you're in a high metro area, that means you could pinpoint exactly where you want to go. But, again, back to the reel that she made, you have to know your audience. You have to know who are you going to target because you're not about to come to these meetings and then be like, "How I, my business is such and such and I want to do this. They're going to be like, congratulations. Yes. Everybody and their mama going to look at you like you're crazy because they don't. And I'm going to be honest. This is something I had to learn the hard way. Did People I? do not. I don't know if it's a respect thing, but when you come in like as a new business, People don't believe in you at first. No. Right? no so you got to no. come in like, yes, I will say this live. So it looks like I'm not paying attention. But what I'm doing is I'm creating the graphic. Because the last time I tried to save a live and create the graphic at the same time, I lost the live. So um, I'm creating this graphic. I'm going to download it. And before we end this live, I will have this. I will save it so y'all can go back and look at it later. Yeah. Um but yeah, the, I, 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 I always looked at it from that aspect, like anytime you walk into a space. Yeah. Um, and it's okay to be a new business, but they want to know that you know something, right? right. They want to know that you know, um, they want to know that you know what you're doing. Yeah. And that's really what it's about. Um, so keep that, keep that in mind as well. And, and like you said, targeting is when you come in and you're trying to basically, you know, add everybody, you know, be everybody. That's like that person at the networking event who just want to go around. At every table. They're like this. Golly, yeah. like, I just saw you. <laughs> I just saw you. Leave me alone. But yeah, so that that was all I had to say. <laughs> no, I went to, actually, I did a New York City, um, like, networking event, and I knew the specific person that I wanted to talk to, and it was online where they got these now new little platforms where you could go to like a table, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was on the screen <laughs> and I was scheduled at a, another table, but the, the guy that I needed to speak to, he had nobody at his table. So I was like, let me jump on over his right. table. That's who I need to talk to. And he was like, aren't we meeting at one? I said, yeah. He was like, you just freed up my afternoon. I'm just talking to you right now. I said, great, let's get started. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Somebody said, I just want to be government contracting goats like y'all. Thank you oh. so much. I have not made a million dollars, so I don't think that I'm Girl, doing it yet. <laughs> not yet. We, th this, could, this, this, this 
Look, I can't even get it out. The devil <laughs> trying to stop me. But this could be our year, girl. I agree. I agree. So this is the thing. Um, a lot of people on social network will advertise the make a million quick with the government. And that is not my experience. So I cannot share said experience, right? So I I don't I haven't seen that. I actually don't know anybody who's had that unless unless they've had heavy connections prior to i.e. a parent that they passed on the business to or a friend that already is in the government and they, you know, got some unethical business going on, but that's the up to them. But I've I have not seen like from zero to a million. Now product, product is different. Product different. Product is different than services. If you product have a is where I want to be. <laughs> right. Product can get you zero to a million while you're sleeping. Like you're sleeping and you wake up and boom, right? And it depends. Now if you have an extensive catalog, you have a reliable manufacturer that is already cleared with the US government. Um, and you're, let's say you're on the GSA schedule, things like that are where people go straight to a million, right? Because the government, the federal government does not order like five bottles of water. They're ordering 17 million bottles of water, right? And so that is where it can get like, you could really be rich fast. But what a lot of people don't take into account, somebody shared the story, I'll never forget. This guy won a contract. First time, he said in the freaking RFP response, he could deliver the specific specs of a computer. And you already know with the federal government, they put the specs for a particular reason, mainly for security, for security reasons, right? And so he said he could deliver. Mm -hmm. They were like, great, you've been awarded X million dollars, okay? This is his first federal contract. He vetted, you know, the manufacturer was great, but he effed up with pricing. And so, although he won X millions of dollars to get the computers shipped, tax port and everything, he ended up spending every dime that he was awarded and had to come out of pocket. Because if you eff up with the federal government, you essentially need to just throw that business in the trash because <laughs> your report card, what is it called? Like the P, like your P card? No, it's not your P card. It's like your report card that <laughs> grades your performance. They will stop you from being able to do business with other agencies. So as much as people want to be rich quick, there are risks in understanding like, once you have a product, you got to know everything before you decide, I'm going to sell something. Because the specs that the government asked for were way over the amount. And, of course, they chose him because he was the lowest, lowest price. Movement. Yep. And so he thought, oh, my God, I won. I got $3 million. This is my first contract. Baby, you need to use all $3 million <laughs> right. plus your savings to give the government what they asked for. So he was in a bad spot but you really gotta like it it takes time to get there for some people yeah absolutely and those relationships like the i mean that score uh you once you do bad once it it sticks with you for a while before they actually you know start to look at you for any other opportunities so keep that in mind y'all I'm about to download this graphic because I know we're about to hop off soon. Yeah. If I, if I, like, I'll do this, but if I swipe my screen up, will it take me off of Instagram? Like, will it close? Yeah, to it'll be, you'll be, what you call that thing? It'll pause. Pause? Yeah. It'll pause but, me. but I can download it. I can download the graphic in time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. like um virtual events you did it yes okay oh, i was answering one of the questions in the meantime oh, good. somebody said advice when attending a live government event 
Um, it depends because if you are on the computer, a lot of them have blocked the ability for you to even at, like come up on stage and ask, which I hate. Um, so that's the problem. But if person, right? Most of the time, if you're in person, they actually give you the list of the agencies that will be in attendance and who will be in attendance in advance. And if I were you, I would be doing the research to see what contracts are tied to these particular people um, in, or opportunities, and then kind of go in there, again, capability statement in hand, right? Think of like a resume. You want to know exactly what you're going to talk about when you do get in front of them in person. Someone asked a question about state and local offices using a report card. So they don't, but you can be debarred from doing work business with the government. So they all have a debarred list. Now, sometimes yep. these lists don't, uh, they don't cross reference each list. Um, but if you get caught, you will be caught. Uh, you won't go to jail most of the time, but it'll be a fine. And help yeah. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, so most of them don't have some type of reports, uh, report card system, but they are starting to implement them. Um, from what I've seen, there's some new like technology companies in the space who are offering that to state and local governments. Um, so yeah, and they also talk to each other, like they talk across the aisle to each other. Um, it's easier for them to have a conversation because they are all a part of these organizations like the NIGP and um you know the contractor management association so they're all a part of like groups so it's easier for them to have conversations as well um yeah yeah somebody somebody asked are contracts with services easier to get with private sector or government um okay so no contract is easier to get and essentially private sector private sector I guess would be easier if you're not bidding. Mm -hmm. But when you really essentially think about it, if you think about micro purchases or simplified acquisition, you're not bidding either. So it with private sector, there isn't as much red tape or formality in submitting a proposal. So for the federal government with FAR regulations, there's so much red tape where you have to read and, you know, like, I, like this opportunity we just won, she's like, read section 9.3. I'm like, girl, what? Like, just tell me what paperwork we got to give you. Like, you know, submit this paperwork. And you're signing a lot of, like, my favorite is when I get the pages, like, are you doing business with Iran? I'm like, no. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> why would I be doing But you have to sign a lot of, like, disclosure forms and disclosure agreements that's just it. it's just a lot of formality but with the private sector it's more like make this beautiful presentation mm -hmm. put your price and pray for the best it is yeah so i'll i'll, I'll go with that one the, pri the private spaces you just tell them what you what you're gonna do and <laughs> uh also i will say it depends on what industry you're in because some private sector corporations have like stricter guidelines and requirements than government agencies like mm. for bidding and insurance capa uh, capabilities and things like that some yeah. private sectors they just go they're just outrageous with it like they they already have an idea of what type of companies they want to work with and yep. not fit to bid them <laughs> yep um so like you're telling me to have a three million dollar insurance policy why do i need that like right what? That's what, what? How many people y'all think I got on this team? You want me to have? I I think that's the one. Somebody one contract, I, and I wasn't awarded this contract. They were like, you need vehicle insurance, uh, what liability, I and I was like, girl, what? Is this? And it was in the midst of the pandemic. I was like, I'm gonna be in my house, like <laughs> working. Yeah. Okay, but I I had a great time. I know that yes. I have to sign off. We should do this every week. Yeah. Um, not next week though. I am not going to week. Africa next what? What week. Part? Senegal. Oh, I'm going to wow. Senegal. Um, I'm going with uh Chicago. Well, essentially, I'm going with Marcellus Wade, which is Black Fox Group. He is in government contracting as well. 
And yeah, I've seen him. We were supposed to connect and never uh, got around to it. So, oh, man. I, you know what? I should have told you about this. So, this be on everybody. So, everybody say this live. We're going to Africa with Chicago MBDC, Minority Business Development Center. And essentially, um, uh, Chicago has built a relationship with the a Africa, just African all countries, Africa. right? Okay. And to take MWBE certified businesses to start contracting work for with the African government. Wow. What the? So, I like this. I don't we feel like use way at this point. wait. Don't you live in Florida? <laughs> you live in Florida, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, Miami has Miami's MBDC has the exporting, but theirs is for the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So uh, we used the state trade expansion program, which is with the Small Business Administration, in order to be funded. So they pay uh, SBA pays for the flight, the hotel, all that stuff. But it depends on your state. So my state paid for it. Um, the Chicago entity is called the Minority Business Development Center, the export program. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to go and network and possibly get some contracts over there. Wow. This is insane. That's amazing. Congratulations. That's huge. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm I've been excited. wanting to go to the continent for so long. I just... You know what they say you you got to make time for stuff so yes that's exciting take a lot of pictures i will please because i just want to be there but thank you again for coming on and like sharing all of this um we gonna connect when you come back yes absolutely okay. all Later. right thank you all bye everybody bye, bye. how do i okay